Hello, this is Wampire uh, here to talk about lock flow. So in this video, I have this on loop so you guys could kind of have an idea of what lock flow is. But I recommend that you go on YouTube, type in um, lock flow, type in martial arts, you know, and uh, you'll probably get better examples of what conventional lock flow looks like. What I'm doing here is a little bit more experimental, so it's a little bit different plus I'm not using a human partner, so uh, I could kind of um, apply the techniques a little bit rougher on Stickman here. So, the, you know, things like that change a little bit um, of what normal lock flow looks like and what I'm doing here. Um, but yeah, this is totally based on the traditional exercise known as lock flow. Now, um, my viewpoints on lock flow is quite different and um, that's also because to me lock flow and the hubud uh, or should I say Filipino trapping both of those are connected and because they're connected um, my viewpoints on lock flow and also Filipino trapping is drastically different than conventional so I'm just gonna put that out right there I have no problem saying it in fact I want everyone to know because I think this is a problematic area that needs revision. Um, you know, not, not saying that the original material is wrong. So that that's super important. I think it needs to be evolved so that people can understand better how to use it. Okay. So the first thing I got to say is, yeah, my views on... Filipino trapping and lock flow, very different from normal, okay? Number two, everyone says that lock flow is an exercise, right? I mean, that, that's fairly known knowledge because you're going from one technique to the next. And I think the people today kind of, they get, on the most part, most people get that. They go, this is not real life direct application like what you're seeing you're not going to do it exactly the way it is in real life so people understand that okay real life is going to be different from this therefore this is an exercise okay um so that's that's a good thing for sure that is a good thing but the problem is the explanation of why it's an exercise and what it's for is completely not there and then even though they say it's an exercise like I just watched the video real quick before making this one just to organize my thoughts on lock flow it was a I think some really famous world world-class instructor demonstrating lock flow on YouTube and once again it looked to me like this dude is confused even though he's awesome at lock flow way more skilled smoother than me but in real life, I don't think he could apply any of it. Like, it's not happening. And But the way that he's explaining it, the way that he's doing it, it's almost like he believes that that's the way you're going to use it in real life. And that's the impression that he's giving to his students, which is ultra confusing, ultra misleading. And that's why, um, you know, in some ways, I don't like lock flow and Filipino trapping. In some ways, I really, really dislike it just for that because it's so confusing. It's not clear how the hell do you use this in real life. And there, it, to me, when they say this is an exercise, this is a drill, that's an excuse because this is supposed to be for real life. You know, this is supposed to be used in real life application for self-defense um, or military uh, and then for the military personnel, like soldiers, to be able to use this stuff, they don't have a whole lot of time to train this. They, they're they doing other stuff. So this stuff needs to be quick and simple, easy to use. And that's one of the things that I loved about Filipino martial arts, that it's not, it's deep, but it's not super deep from the, right from the beginning. You know, it, it should be something that you could pick up right away and go, oh, okay, I, I know how to use this. I know how to swing a machete around. I know how to swing a knife around. 
there, you know how to use it. Okay, yeah, I'm not saying you're great, but at least you know what to do kind of thing. And with this, the Filipino trapping and the lock flow, it doesn't work that way. It, it's it's not. So in that sense, I dislike it. Um, I am not happy with it. And that's why I've been so vocal about talking about this. Now, on the other hand, that doesn't mean that I don't believe in the system. I don't believe in the style. I don't believe in the techniques. No, no, no. I, the opposite. I 100% believe in um, Filipino trapping and lock flow. I 100% believe in the techniques. I 100% believe in the style. And, and that's why I'm still doing FMA, Filipino martial arts. So uh, Kali Eskrima Arnis, which I just call Kia. But I am 100% for it. I think what happens is a lot of people, you know, they go, okay, this is not direct application. You don't see it in MMA. You don't see it in boxing and wrestling and kickboxing. Therefore, this stuff is fake. Um, therefore, this stuff doesn't work. And they start attacking the system. They start attacking the techniques. They start attacking the instructor and the training methods. And for me, that's a no. That I don't, I don't feel that way at all, okay? Um, the part that I am attacking is that it's confusing. What the hell is this for? You know, obviously it's for real life, but there's a gap between the exercise and the application. There's a big, big, big gap. What is missing? And um, so I'm here to share my two cents, my journey to try to help you guys uh, make this stuff more practical. So first of all, a lot of uh, traditional martial arts is missing context, okay? And I need to clarify what do I mean by it's missing context. Um, when they're demonstrating the techniques, it's like in an abstract world. It's in this um, textbook world that is far from reality. And without a realistic context, you don't know how to apply it, you know? So like you could, we could go to um a university and they teach us complex calculus or something or you know college algebra or whatever right and it's so far away from real life usage that I, I don't know how to apply it in my everyday real life okay so i'm not saying that calculus and college al algebra is not practical it doesn't work but there's a big gap between how do i use like most of the formulas I learned, I don't remember anymore. Of course, it's been a while, but I, I don't remember. And part of that is because I, I don't apply it. I don't, and maybe it would be very useful, but I, would, I never figured it out how to apply it. Okay. So that, that's kind of what I mean by here, the context. We need to have the context. Okay. And th this is the same thing that can happen to MMA and boxing because you could go to boxing and you could go to MMA, MMA gym and they teach you stuff. And when they teach you like, they teach it like a traditional martial art. They're like, okay, when the person punches, you're going to parry and then you're going to come back with a cross. Without the context, it's very, very difficult to use it. Even though we're in an MMA gym and these are MMA techniques, once again, if the context is not there, it's very, very difficult. And and here, um, and the lock flow that I'm uh, that I'm talking about in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, we do transitions. We do we do that. And there's transition flow type exercises, and those are 100% drills and exercises too. So it's used even in something that a lot of people would consider very, very practical, like BJJ, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And they do train that way so because it's effective to train that way. So there is a purpose for lock flow. Okay, there is. It's just we need to know the context, right? So for me, number one, the context is this happens in close range, meaning we could grab each other. Okay, we're close enough to grab each other. So that tells me plain and simple that this is in close range and this is needs to be done with grappling energy. In close range, grappling dominates. Therefore, 
you need to do it in grappling in a grappling format and 90 per, maybe a hundred percent of lock flow that I see other people doing is based off of striking they're thinking from a striking format from a stand-up striking the guy throws a punch you catch his wrist go into a wrist lock we're gonna go into we'll bend his arm go into an elbow lock, we'll, we'll go into a shoulder lock, we'll do a takedown. You know, they're, they're doing the typical lock flow, but it's it's from striking energy. It's, it's almost like this striking world that doesn't exist because in close range, like I said, it's going to happen with grappling, you know. So that's number one for me. That is the biggest problem is that everybody – training this stuff the context is completely wrong okay now i'm not here to attack maybe if you want to say that it is lock flows for striking that's fine but you're going to have to in order for me to be convinced in that sense right to go i can see this makes sense like i can see maybe i'm not going to use it but for me to go oh that's something that is usable, right? I need to see it. I need, I need to see the context. I need to see the logic. I, I don't necessarily need to see it in being applied in full contact fighting or, or see it applied in uh, UFC or something like that. I don't necessarily need to see that. But before we even go there, I need to see the context. And without that, if you're just demonstrating without content, which is, that's what a demonstration is because it's, it's make-believe world. The, you know, the student could throw a punch and just pause and then the instructor could go into a million different techniques. It doesn't matter how fast the student punches. It doesn't matter how good it looks. If it's not missing, if it's missing realistic context, it's a fantasy world. Therefore, no matter how good it looks, I, I, that doesn't work for me. My, my reasoning, my logic, it, it's like, okay, that's, that's a movie, you know? So we need that realistic context here, okay? And for me, one thing that what I'm doing here, there's two things that I'm doing here that should make this different from other lock flow. Number one, and it, and it might look very similar to what everyone else is doing. Maybe the way that I'm doing it is a little bit more jerky and more experimental because I'm trying to put in force and stuff in there. But like here, you can see I'm taking my time. Obviously, that's not realistic, okay? But number one is I'm thinking about grappling the whole time. So that grappling energy. I'm thinking of this in a grappling context. Now, I'm not full-blown wrestling with a stick man because a stick man is not really built that way and um number two and i understand why people lock flow the way they lock flow because when you start putting in full grappling energy it's difficult to it just looks like wrestling and it's difficult to learn that way so i that's why i'm not going to attack the old school method i get it i get it why they do it that way because if you just said hey let's just we're going to do it off of wrestling a you already have to know wrestling b what if your partner's like 10 times better than you at wrestling? Then we're not going to be able to ever get to these moves. You know, so it just complicates things too much. So they remove the wrestling grappling aspect and just work on the techniques so that you could remember the techniques. Therefore, it is for remembering techniques. That's why it's an exercise. That's why it's a drill, right? So number one is I'm doing this with grappling in mind, okay? And then the next thing I am thinking about, right, is in grappling, essentially what we're doing is joint locks, right? In lock flow, a lot of it is joint locks. So if you're going to do joint locks standing up, how do you do it? And I think a lot of people might go, well, this the same way you do it on the ground and that that is where I discovered, it took me many years, but for me, that the answer is no, it's not the same and, and you don't do it the same as the way you do it on the ground. And that was a big eye-opener because once 
grappling started getting popular, like real popular. And then we had like the pride fighting championships like in Japan and stuff. Um, you saw some geniuses like Kazushi Sakuraba and stuff. The grappling moves that they use standing or the grappling moves that, that we saw from like Pride and even UFC and, and other MMA events were very, very limited. There's way more submissions that you could do on the ground. And standing is very, very limited. There's only a handful that, that you should even attempt. There's only a handful that we've seen work. Okay, why? There's a million submissions on the ground, but there's only a handful standing up. Even using the corner or putting them up against the fence, even then there's only a handful. And I thought to myself, why? Why is that? What's the difference? You know, why can't we do all the awesome grappling moves on the ground standing? And, and the answer that I discovered was take a look at judo, take a look at sumo, any of the um, standing grappling arts like Greco-Roman wrestling and stuff like that, okay? All their stuff works, obviously, because you know you, they got millions and millions of matches, and you see it, and they pull it off. All the throws, right? And I'm I'm talking about a throw. A throw is a grappling move done standing. And when you look at how they execute the throws, they don't squeeze and hold on because it's a throw, right? You you do it quick. You have to do it fast. It's almost impossible against a game opponent that you could do a throw slow and <laughs> and uh, you're able to do it, right? Uh, against a fully resisting opponent that's here to fight, you cannot, it's very, very hard to do a, a throw very slow and still pull it off, right? So all those throws are done fast, lightning fast, right? So then I realized that the submissions need to be done the same way. The, the joint locks need to be done the same way. And that's when my Filipino uh, martial arts training from the past really started to make sense. So I'm going back to the Filipino martial arts. So I was looking at lock flow, which is Filipino martial arts, exercise drill, looking at that, and then my filter, so that's the source, right? The source material is FMA. And the, the formula I follow is three steps. So that's number one, the source material. What's your source material? It could be Taekwondo. It could be whatever you want, right? In my case, it's Filipino martial arts. Number two is my filter. My filter, I filter that through full contact fighting, which is like MMA, kickboxing, boxing, um, wrestling, whatever, full contact, anything full contact. So in full contact, we don't, we're, we're not seeing this stuff. So then if you were to do it in full contact, how do I have to modify it in order to do it in full contact? And like I said, it needs to be fast. It's not like on the ground where I could squeeze an arm bar, squeeze a rear naked choke. No, it needs to be lightning fast. The exception to that maybe would be a guillotine choke, standing guillotine choke, right? But um, uh, a lot of this stuff, needs to be done extremely fast, like a throw. How fast? The same speed as you would a judo throw. That was my answer, okay? So that was was my filter, okay? And, and number step three is how do you organize this stuff? Well, I organized this stuff in, in the same way uh, Captain Fairbairn did, right? Um, or that is my base, which is the military combatives. Why? Because like I said, military combatives is very, very simple and direct, easy for soldiers to pick up in a short amount of time and actually do it. And that is the whole purpose of why I've been talking about this stuff, you know, and, and honestly why I'm here on YouTube is to get Filipino martial arts, which is already a relatively simple art compared to others. And that's what I like about it. And I'm trying to make it even simpler for people to uh, understand without destroying or ruining the quality. I'm, I'm trying my best, you know. Um, so anyway, we have to do the techniques. Once you get into close range, and the ranges 
of combat, long range, medium range, close range, and ground range. Part of part of that makes a huge um, influence in my step three, which is the uh, military combatives presentation, so that you have context. And my context here, like I said, is we're going to be doing this stuff in close range. Okay, so it's not I'm not catching a punch to come in here. No, not none of that. Okay. I'm already in close range. I'm in close range where it's grappling is a possibility here. He could still uppercut me. He could still elbow me, headbutt me, and knee me. But grappling will dominate here. Okay. So him trying to knee me and me trying to get his waist, I'm, I'm in a much better control. I have better control. Okay. So I, I have a much better chance. And, and that's already been... Uh, proven time and time again in the early UFCs, right? So in close range here, I'm I'm going to be grappling energy, grappling dominant. My lock flow will be grappling based, and so what what you're seeing me do here, overhook, underhook with wrenching, and that's super simplified. And right there, that's for a disarm. And if the guy has a knife, I'm going to be trying to disarm after I've wrenched his arm. If you don't compromise the grip and try to disarm the guy, to me, that I, I don't see myself pulling that off. You know, I, I assume my opponent's going to be younger and stronger than me. So I, I just don't see it very realistic to me to be able to just use some kind of magical technique and disarm the guy. No, I need to compromise his grip. How do you compromise his grip? Wrenching. How do you wrench the guy? Well, by securing his arm with an overhook or underhook. How do you do that in close range? So all of that is very, why close range? Because close range is where grappling happens. So, you know, that's why we're here and that's why we're doing that. You know, so, so all that to me logically is simple, makes sense. And, and that's why uh, I modified my lock flow that way. So wrenching. Right here. That's what I'm doing here. I'm going to get, I'm imagining where his elbow is and I'm wrenching. You know, in this case, now his elbow's in a different angle. You know, so I am wrenching. Right here, it's, it's, um, in grappling, not from a strike. In grappling, I caught his arm this way. Okay. I caught his arm and whatever grip I got. And then from there, I'm, in this case, I am striking him while grappling. So I'm, I'm throwing in some strikes. And then there's some wrenches I'm putting in there as well. Okay, but it's based off of the grappling, as as you can see. So it, that all that super super important. I I hope um, this is for me. This is kind of like um, I've been talking to you guys about this for many years now. But I'm just hoping my presentation once again is getting better and better more clear for you guys to understand. And I'm not saying I'm right, everybody else is wrong. What I'm saying is this is what works for me, okay? And like I said, I'm and, and by the proof of that is I'm totally willing, open-minded to accept if, if someone says, no, man, lock flow is striking, stand-up striking based. That's fine, okay? I look forward to seeing your research, all right? I, I look forward to seeing that, you know? I look forward to seeing your your logical explanations. But if you're just gonna do a demo, then I'm, I'm sorry, okay? So I'm trying to offer from my perspective, you know, because I'm not gonna work on someone else's viewpoint. I'm working on my viewpoint, my, my craft. So from my viewpoint, for me, you know, that I'm working on, is this, and, and all I can do is make it better as I go. And, and this is what I came to. If for me to do lock flow in full contact, I need to make it grappling energy, grappling based, and I need to do the locks like right there, like what you're seeing there. It needs to be fast. And that's my trapping right there, okay? My trapping is grappling based, okay? It's not striking based. It wasn't right there with what you saw me earlier. I didn't catch a punch to trap his arm. No, I went from already a grappling situation to trap his arm. Okay. 
And that, uh, I have actually seen that kind of stuff in uh, MMA. Uh, I can't recall seeing that actual move that I did, but I have recalled seeing it done on the ground, which is kind of cool too. <laughs> the, the arm trapping, yeah. Um, where they reach behind the, the opponent and they grab the far arm, you know, by, by reaching behind the opponent. And that now, your right arm, so if, if you do that with the left arm, your, your right arm is free to strike the guy. And because his left arm, which is on, on that right side for me, it has nothing to, uh, is, is trapped by my left arm, so he can't protect. And I could just keep punching him with my right arm. So, uh, sorry, that was super confusing probably. But, um, yeah, that, that's the kind of trapping that could be done on the ground. And you could see UFC fighters doing it. Okay, but here I am, not for the ground, but standing up doing it. Okay, so that's more rare right now. So, anyway, anyway, uh, that's it for now. Um, thank you for viewing and take, take care folks. <laughs>